Hello everyone and welcome. Sit back, relax, and get comfortable because this is a wonderful time for new stories from Yellowcat. Write your favorite stories in the comments below and maybe they'll be in our new video. Let's get started. What incident at your job made you so mad you left it without any notice? In the early 2000s, I worked for a company that primarily rented videos, but also had a sister store that rented video games. After working for a few years, my first store manager, who was the greatest guy ever, moved to Texas. At the time, I was the assistant store manager, and I didn't get the chance to become the store manager. Rather, it went to another guy who said he was a pastor from a nearby store. It seems that the new job had a salary pay model instead of an hourly wage. This man arrived for work a couple of hours a day, maybe three days a week from the day he was hired. I knew this was wrong, but I have to accept that he's my boss. I was an awesome human who had run the store from top to bottom under my previous boss. I worked 18 hour days for the next three to four months in order to finish my responsibilities as store manager and assistant manager. Working the swing shift meant that I occasionally returned to work the opening shift after staying late to complete the graveyard inventory shift. Since it was against the law for me to work so many shifts, I was not even on the clock for the majority of those times. I was at a loss for what action to take. It wouldn't get done if I didn't do it. I was unable to ignore them and move on. It's not how I was made. It seems that my excessive overtime caused an alarm at corporate, leading them to believe that I was deceitfully claiming overtime. After conducting an investigation and going over months worth of security footage, they discovered that I was present for up to 18 hours a week while Isaiah, the store manager, was there for roughly 18. After firing Isaiah, they hired a new store manager from a nearby store who had a history of firing employees without cause. Background, my friend used to work there. I hired him approximately a year prior. Tommy was his name. Two weeks prior, Tommy had given notice that he was moving to attend college, so he had given his two weeks notice. Today was his last day. He was acting a little sluggishly, so I kept telling him to do this and that, and he would respond, well, if I don't, what are you going to do, fire me? I eventually told him to clock out since he wasn't going to work, but he stayed until I was finished because he didn't want to be alone with me. When I worked late, my then boyfriend would give me a call to see how I was doing. He did this that evening, and Tommy answered the phone while I was stocking the video shelves. My boyfriend was on the phone, he called me to the front. Tommy was cool with my boyfriend. Tommy jokes, here she is, and by the way, I'm bumping your GF's leg right now when I get to the phone. For about a minute and a half, Tommy feigned to hump my leg. We all laughed, and call, and shift, and head home. Tommy is no longer a college student. After a few months, all of this has transpired, and a new manager has been hired to oversee the store. I didn't do anything to him. Corporate even told him that I wasn't the bad apple ruining the bunch, that I'd been working extremely hard at both jobs, and that I'd kept the store afloat during Isaiah's first month as manager. The security footage has all the evidence. This short, insecure man with a longer nose than he was tall seemed to be targeting me for some reason. One day, I get called into work. It was him and, as of late, a different manager from a different store who told me he was a witness. I had done nothing wrong, so in my innocent mind, I was going to get a promotion or something. He takes me to a seat and starts playing some security video. Tommy, please pretend to hump my leg for a full minute and a half. I gave my explanation, saying that he was joking and that it was his last day as a friend. To be clear, Tommy did something to me. I did not do anything to him. Considering everything I had done, working so hard, not moaning, and just working nonstop to keep the store open, I nearly forgot to mention that, while Isaiah was manager, my appendix burst. After undergoing an urgent appendectomy and a cystectomy on my right ovary, I returned to work three days later with 13 staples in my abdomen. Despite all of that, I continued to work and behave morally. However, this man tells me that I'm now on probation based on this brief exchange in which I did nothing wrong and the employee did something inappropriate. I can take a joke, I wasn't offended. That meant I knew that he was trying to find an excuse to fire me right away. Keep in mind that this was the busiest time of the year, the holidays. Knowing that we would be short-staffed the following week due to AH's decision to fire everyone, I decided to wait until then and skipped my shift. 
It took me about four calls from him before I answered. He called me frantic and angry, wanting to know when I was coming in, and I said, Oh, yeah, about that. I'm not. More yelling, and then, Can I at least count on you for the next two weeks? And I said, Sorry, I already have another job. And that was the truth. I did. It felt really good to F that AH over. I was a developer and lead project manager at a tech company with too many lazy vice presidents just trying to pump up their stock options without doing any real work. They were good at selling projects by underbidding, but wouldn't hire enough developers to do the work already promised, let alone new sales. I was stressed beyond belief. We had some good developers, but just not enough. My boss was a VP who lived 500 miles away and didn't do anything except watch his stock portfolio and call me to tell me to just get it done. I confided in the VP of sales that the situation was untendable and the jobs he was selling weren't going to get done because we had no developers available and were told not to hire anyone new. They were building a house of cards and setting me up to fail. Sales VP surprises me with a conference call with my boss. They were yelling and screaming at each other, and I was stuck in the middle. Sales VP, F you, my boss, no, F you, me thinking to myself, F both of you. After the call, my boss called me back and tore me a new one over the phone for not supporting him and the company, and your performance metrics are in jeopardy. That was the moment I decided to quit. I hung up, went home early. Talked it over with my wife. Yep, need to quit. Had to be done. This was back in the day where it was fairly straightforward for developers to get work, so I wasn't too worried about the next opportunity. When I called my boss later to give notice, he got very quiet but pretended to be blasé. After an hour later, the CEO of the company, who had never talked to me before, invited me to lunch. I went to the lunch. I told him I had found a better fit elsewhere. I didn't say a word about the toxic environment and worthless boss and disingenuous VPs who were setting the company up for failure. I was polite, yet completely unhelpful. F those guys. The company went bankrupt about 18 months later. Me, I ended up just fine. I've come to appreciate the experience as a lesson in how not to run a company and how not to treat employees and customers. Homeowner, share your story of encountering a moronic neighbor or HOA. In the backyard where my mom lived, neighbors would always be watching you. We were building a shed in the backyard next to the fence. It had to be someone's complaint. After a quick review of the bylaws, we set the concrete foundation. We had to halt construction halfway through the build after the foundation and framework were finished because we had neglected to account for the overhanging roof's distance from the fence. Despite the fact that there were countless ways to get around it and that we hadn't even built the roof yet, the HOA threatened to fine us and forced us to move everything one and a half feet away from the fence on either side since it was in the corner of the yard. Once a concrete foundation is laid, it cannot be precisely moved. After a lengthy story, we had to rebuild the shed's framing, which resulted in a much smaller shed. Additionally, we were still discovered to have neglected to move the concrete foundation, and the fence side of the shed now has one and a half feet empty space surrounding it. Seems depressing and pitiful. F you neighbors in HOA. I used to rent a townhouse in a community with homeowners associations a few years ago with an ex-roommate. Pleasant neighbors and folks. HOA didn't have any strong opinions about any one thing. When a strong storm approaches, it covers everything in a foot or two of snow. As he leaves, the snowplow that the HOA hired remarks, I'll be back around this way about every 30 minutes for the next four hours or so. Just shovel your snow into the street and I'll push it to the curb out of the way. The entire neighborhood is out shoveling snow at the moment. Everyone follows along. After about an hour of this, as we're assisting other people who arrived late to the celebration, the president of the HOA arrives and throws a tantrum, yelling at my roommate and me specifically because he thinks that we young people are the ones causing the issues. We tell him to GFY because he doesn't believe us when we tell him the person he hired told us to do this. When he confronts us and begins to touch my roommate, I intervene to defuse the tension. He calls our landlord, who then gives us a call to discuss the situation. We explain everything to him. Telling the HOA press to GFY, he calls him back. He's told to GFY by the rest of the neighborhood. 
He attempts to call the police, who ostensibly advise him to GFY as well, predictably more professionally since no one was leaving during the storm, especially not for something so trivial. He rarely messed with anyone after that incident. My new roommate moved in beneath me. She made a lot of friends fast and tricked them into voting her onto the HOA board. She moved her nicotine-infused houseplants to the building's shared entrance as soon as she assumed her new role as dictator. They might have won the prize for ugliest houseplants that she couldn't fit in her condo because it was winter and she couldn't put them outside. When summer arrived, she continued to refuse to move them. The HOA rules make it clear that personal belongings are not permitted in shared areas. I sent a letter to the HOA president, and he handwritten and taped it to my door telling me to stop bothering her. I forced myself not to fill her planters with weed killer and grass. In order to leave my condo, I quickly sold it for a huge loss. The new autocrat who occupied the apartment below me used to smoke, and the smoke would enter my condo. The most likely reason was caused by the holes discovered in her washroom. She never made it right. She used to smoke on her balcony as well, and the smoke would enter my house through my sliding door and open windows. Ah. In a separate incident, my quarter cord of firewood was hauled away by the HOA since it wasn't stored on a rack. At the head of my covered parking space, it was piled high. I didn't notice the notice until the day before it was removed from my firewood stack, which they had placed there. Did they not know who owned the address for the parking space? B.S. Despite being on disability due to a bad back, she managed to bring in 24 packs of Diet Pop and move firewood to her wood-burning fireplace with ease. My father passed back in January 2011 and left me his condo. The joint was managed by a management company owned by the HOA. Regardless, after emptying the house, we began the rental process. Since I was paying for utilities like gas, electricity, water, sewer, and property, I might as well try to recover some of those expenses. After a few months, the tenants discover some mold grown on the wall next to the window. I begin the insurance cleanup after obtaining pictures. As it happens, a particularly severe Chicago winter cracked the runoff that makes up the windows. Hence, when it rained or snowed, the water would strike the external window and seep into the wall. Warm temperatures in the future led to the growth of mold. After the tenants vacate, I felt horrible because they left a month early, I hire a contractor to start gutting the living room in early May in order to address the mold problem. My roof was due to be replaced that summer, and at the same time, the HOA was replacing the roofs on whole house sections. Insurance begins to pay out, but then, bam, they leave windows uncovered. What the heck? They say that it's not part of their coverage. Talk to the HOA. I contact the HOA by phone and email. What do you think? The HOA does not provide coverage for windows. It's August now, and I'm at odds with the HOA over who pays for the repairs. Thank the gods for my contractor, who was incredibly understanding, as the living room's interior was completely renovated and looks fantastic. In the end, the HOA replaces the window and my roof. The bill I received for the window came next, about half of the total price. They informed me that the window was caulked rather than properly installed and that I would be entirely liable for any future mold growth. In the fall, I sold the house. F that HOA and that property management company. I used to live in a house without an HOA and then moved into a new house with one. I was bugged the first year in this crazy bee for having a snow shovel outside when it started to snow. Then, in the spring of that year, these effing idiots on the HOA board started a controversial plan to remove all of the gorgeous big trees on the tree lawn and plant new ones in their place. The idea was hated by everyone except the board and a few others. When I told my realtor, she looked at me like I was nuts. The same kind of look she'd give if I told her I was going to paint my house hot pink. The vote on the tree issue was also highly debatable. Voting was open to all members of the community, but the board, who desired the removal of the lovely old trees, secretly counted all the ballots. We were informed that some homeowners did not cast ballots, or that some were blank, BS, and this story has a lot more shady underbelly. I was engrossed in an ancient Rome documentary. Rome's desire to be in control and not have to put up with other people's nonsense was one of the justifications offered for its expansion and conquest of its neighbors. I ran the next year along with others who hated the tree replacement. We won by a landslide. 
We undid their other piece of stupid ass, but we were unable to stop the tree debacle. The lunatic woman who complained about the shovel would continue to complain about other petty crap for a whole bunch of neighbors, threatening to take it to the board. I made a point of just laughing at her to pee her off. She ran against me the next year, and I was an overwhelming victor. Because of this, the majority of the original board members who lost actually moved. It was strangely satisfying. Thank you for listening to these stories. If you want to see new videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit the like button.